It's 1888 and everywhere you turn, people are talking about the horseless carriage. In Gear and Piston, you will be playing as a meager engineer who is ambitious enough to try and please pesky investors who are trying to cash in on the future of transportation. Gear and Piston is a worker placement game where players will go to different locations on the board to gain parts to build a prototype for an investor. Throughout the game, you will patent new parts in the patent office. You will look for rejected volatile pieces of machinery in the junkyard. You will try to gain an edge through back alley deals in the back alley. And finally, you will go to your workshop and try and build the prototype. Will you win the race that is gear and piston with a lot of skill and a little luck and without blowing yourself up in the process? Maybe. Good timing and keeping an eye on your competitor are all you need to succeed in the business. So with a wrench, some elbow grease, and your wits, let's put some gear and pistons together. This is Gear and Piston. In the box you get 12 player aid tiles in 6 different colors, along with 36 action tokens in 6 different colors. You get 1 variant tile, 1 first player tile, 20 scrap part tiles, 42 new part tiles, 42 junk part tiles, 14 investor tiles in three different stacks. You get the board and you also get an instruction manual in three different languages. English French, I believe, and German. Okay, to set up gear and pistons, first thing I'm going to do is place the board in front of everybody in easy reach. Then you want to take your junk part tiles and your new part tiles and you want to go through them and remove any tile with the four through six uh, legend down here if you're playing a two or three player game once you get all of them out you discard them they won't be used for a two or three player game next we're going to shuffle the new part tiles and place them in this box here inside of the patent office then we'll take the top six tiles and place them face up above the board Next, we will take our junk parts, shuffle them up, and place them in this box here inside of the junkyard. Then we will take the top three and place them to the right of the board. Face up. Next, we will take our spare parts, shuffle them up, place them next to the board. Next, we will take our investor tiles and shuffle them up in their corresponding stacks. There's stack 1 and stack 2 and finally stack 3. Stack 3 will discard from the game for this type of gameplay, the basic game. Stack 1 and 2 we will take one tile from each randomly. And then turn them face up so everybody can see what the investors for the game is. Okay, and then place them somewhere within easy sight of everybody. I'm just going to place them over here to the left. The rest of the tiles will be put back in the box. They will not be used for the rest of the game. Okay. Next, each player will be handed their player read tiles. along with the action tokens in the player's corresponding color. Now, in a two or three player game, all six action tokens will be used. In a four, five, or six player game, only five of the action tokens will be used. Okay. Now, each player will take one of their action tokens and place it on the zero spot of the score track. Then they will take one more of their action tokens and place it on the zero spot of their volatility track. 
Finally, players will take the remainder of their action tokens and place them in the holding cell. Next, whoever has the oldest car will go first. In this case, it'll be Jen. We'll give them the first player token. And you are now ready to play Gear and Piston. Okay, now the object of Gear and Piston is to build a vehicle. To do this, we will acquire new part tiles and junk part tiles through different actions on the board, which we'll get into in a second. But in order to successfully complete a vehicle, there are a few rules we have to follow. The first one is the minimum requirement for a vehicle. That is two axles, one gearbox, one steering system, and there can be a maximum of one steering system on a vehicle, and then one propulsion system that consists of a motor and a fuel system for that particular type of propulsion system. In this case, it's electric. Now there are three different types of propulsion systems. There is green, which represents electric. There is red, which re represents gasoline. And finally, we have gold, which represents steam. Now, you just can't place parts willy-nilly in your vehicle. To successfully complete a vehicle, it must be supported by these two axles, like I said. And each axle supports five tiles, either orthogonally or diagonally. Also, for every top tile you have in your vehicle, you must also have a bottom tile to support that and vice versa. Now to differentiate the top and bottom tiles, the bottom tiles have this black straight strip going across the bottom, and if you look at the woodwork, it is a straight line going across the bottom. That indicates it's a bottom piece. If it were a top piece, we would have this curved section in the woodwork, and also this railing. And one further point is, the artwork, the brick artwork, does not have a black stripe going across the top. Okay? So the minimum amount of tiles you need in order to complete a vehicle is six. Okay, so here we go. This is a completed vehicle. We have two axles, one steering system, one propulsion unit with a motor and a fuel system and a gear unit. Now, along with our propulsion system, there is an improvement tile that corresponds with each particular type of, of propulsion system, whether it be green electric, yellow steam, or red gasoline. Mainly, the improvement tiles for our uh, propulsion systems, our colored propulsion systems, give us some feature that the investors are looking for. There is also a generic type of improvement tile that looks like this uh, coolant coil here. Now these have this golden wrench on them, which negates one point of volatility, which we'll get into in a few minutes. You can have as many of these improvement tiles, whether they be generic or color coded, in your vehicle as you wish. Now, while you are working on your prototype, you can do this in two separate sections. And if you wanted to, you could even swap these sections around and for end while you are building your vehicle. Okay? But at some point in time, for a free action, you must join these two sections of the prototype together. Once they are joined, they cannot be separated, unless you use a dismantle action, which would remove one tile that joins the two sections together. And we'll get into dismantle later on. Okay, before we get into how the board of Gear and Piston works, we're going to first go over the, the basic tiles of Gear and Piston, okay? 
there are mainly four different types of tiles. We have the new part tiles, the junk part tiles, investor tiles, and finally scrap part tiles. Okay, now new part and junk part tiles will be required through certain actions throughout the board and you can place them in your hand. Now when you place these tiles in your hand it is known as a blueprint. And in your blueprint you can have a maximum of five tiles. Okay, and they can consist of either junk parts or new parts, new parts or a combination of both. Let's get into the tile types a little bit. Okay, first we have these junk parts. Okay, now Junk parts are just like new parts, which we'll get into in a second, with the exception that they're a little beat up. They've been used a little bit, okay? Now, all tiles are laid out the same, okay? You'll either have a bottom section or a top section. On the left side of the tile, you'll have a symbol which indicates what function this tile performs in your vehicle. On the right side of the tile there is usually a symbol which indicates either a positive or negative effect towards scoring. Now in the case of junk parts it's usually a negative effect which is this black cloud symbol representing volatility and we'll get into that in a second. Some tiles in the junk parts do not have a symbol on the right side of the tile that simply just means there's no positive or negative effect to the tile. This tile here is a steering system, which is indicated by the steering wheel symbol on the left side of the tile. Here we have a tile representing an axle, which is represented by the symbol on the left side of the tile that looks like a spoked wheel. This tile here represents a gear unit, which is represented by these two cogs. Now here we have a motor which is represented by this motor symbol here on the left side of the tile. Now remember, every propulsion system needs a motor and a fuel tank of the corresponding color, whether it be yellow, red, or green. Here we have the corresponding fuel system for the steam engine, which is represented by this half-filled tank in the left corner of the tile. The final type of tile we have is an improvement tile, which is represented by this symbol here on the left side of the tile. Now some improvement tiles are specific to certain propulsion types, as in this case of a steam improvement tile. But if we have an improvement tile, which is indicated by this symbol on the left, that is gray and has like this cooling uh, tank part, that is considered a generic tile. Now, in the game, investors will be funding your prototypes, through victory points in this case, and certain investors are looking for specific features in their vehicle. This is represented on the right side of the tile by these gold symbols. In this case, this piston symbol represents power. This symbol here on the right equals range. And finally, the last symbol your investors will be looking for is this golden feather symbol here which equals comfort. Now throughout the game when you use junk parts and at the end of the game if you have to use spare parts chances are you're going to get one or more of these volatility symbols which is this black cloud uh, symbol here. Okay now for every volatility symbol you have in your vehicle you will lose one victory point at the end of the game. But these generic improvement tiles here have this gold wrench on them, okay? And that negates one point of volatility for each of these tiles with the golden wrench you have in your vehicle. Now, if you ever forget what these symbols mean, your player aid tiles here give you a minimum and maximum requirement for the different component types in the vehicle. And on the back, they also give you an overview of the either positive or negative effects that the features of the tile represent. So like I said, investors will be backing the players playing engineers in the form of victory points at the end of the game. 
each investor is looking for a specific type of vehicle to be built. Now there are three different stacks of investors. We have the first stack, the second stack, and the third stack. And they all are differentiated by this number in the circle in the bottom right of the back of the tiles. Now for investors in the first stack, they're looking for features in the vehicle, but they would prefer one over the rest usually. So, in this case, this investor here will give you three victory points for the first two range symbols in your vehicle. And then for each additional range symbol in your vehicle, she will give you an additional two points at the end of the game, okay? Next, she's looking for comfort in her vehicle. So, for the first two comfort symbols in your vehicle, she will give you two victory points. And then for each additional comfort symbol in the vehicle, she'll give you an additional two victory points. And the last thing she's looking for is power. And for the first two power symbols in her vehicle, she'll give you one victory point, and then for each additional, she'll give you two victory points. Okay, the, the investors in stack two here are looking for specific traits in your vehicle. Like this guy here, he'll give you three victory points if you have at least two symbols of every feature in your vehicle. This guy here, he's looking for the biggest vehicle. He'll give you three victory points if you have the vehicle with the most parts in it. This guy here, he's looking for efficiency. For every tile that you have in your blueprint at the end of the game, he'll give you a penalty of minus one point. Okay, and they continue on like that. Now the investors in stack three are mainly looking for the majority of a specific feature in your vehicle okay so like this guy here if you have the majority of range symbols in your vehicle you'll get awarded two victory points and then if there's a tie each player who is involved with the tie will receive two victory points the final type of tile in in the game is scrap parts now these are only used at the end of the game to fill in any blank spaces in your vehicle or to cover any component of your vehicle that is not functioning, okay? And these will basically give you either zero volatility points, one volatility point, or two volatility points, depending on the luck of the draw. Here we go into the board, and the board is broken up into six different sections. Okay, here we have the scoring track, which we won't really worry about until the end of the game, other than these three symbols here. This first symbol here represents it your investors okay you will score depending on the investor type you have and the requirements you have to fulfill according to those investors here we have the scoring condition of the largest continuous group of a certain color in your vehicle whether it be gasoline steam electric or generic parts and we'll get into that in a little bit and the final scoring condition is volatility. For every symbol of volatility in your vehicle, you will get a minus one victory point at the end of the game. So again, we will not worry about any of this until the end of the game. We just want to keep it in mind so we know how to score during the game. Okay, so now gear and piston is broken up into three phases. The first phase is the action phase where we will place our workers here, these cogs, in spots throughout the board to perform specific duties. The next phase is the resolve phase and in the resolve phase we'll actually go to the location and perform the action it allows you to do. And the final phase is the resolve phase. During the resolve phase we will discard any remaining face up tiles in both the patent and the junkyard sections of the board and then refresh them with either new parts or junkyard parts. Okay, as you can see next to the victory track here, we have numbers for each location. And during the resolve phase, we will resolve each location on the board in ascending order, going from one all the way down here to five. Each location also has symbols representing the action that you can perform in that location. Along with empty spots that tell you you can place your workers there or numbered spots that tell you if you have so many players then you can use these spots 
to perform actions. So, in the patent office here, location three, if there were three players, players could put their workers in any of these empty spots and in this number three spot. If there were four or five players, they could use this spot here. If there were six players, they could go all the way up to this spot. Now, right here in the center board, we have a holding box, which is where players will place their workers, represented by these gears, after they perform their actions to indicate that they have used these workers and are ready to use them on the next round. During the planning phase, there are four sections of the board that we will use. Okay? During the resolve phase of the game, we will use all five numbered sections of the board. So the first section we have here is the scoring track. We won't worry about that until the end of the game. The first numbered spot on the board here is the volatility track. Next, the second numbered spot on the board is called the back alley. The third numbered spot on the board is called the patent office. And this is where you get new parts. The fourth number section of the board here is called the junkyard, and this is where you get used parts. And the final section of the board down here is the workshop. During the planning phase, we will ignore the volatility track, and we will come back to that during the resolve phase. Now, number two through five spots will be used during the action phase to place your workers to acquire the benefits of the location you place your workers in. Each player can place any number of their workers in any location as long as there is an empty spot in the location to support their worker. Okay, so for a two player game in the patent office here, there can be four workers. If it were a three player game, we would use this numbered spot here and we could place an additional worker there. With a four or five player game, we could place an additional worker here in this spot. And finally, with a six player game, we could place an additional worker here in this spot. Okay, now the order of which your workers are in a specific location depicts the order in which players will perform the resolve action of that location during the resolve phase. Okay, so during the resolve phase, the first thing you're going to do is check the volatility of your vehicle and then add one point of volatility for every symbol in your vehicle. Okay, so let's look at this vehicle here. There's one, two, three tiles with the volatility symbol on it. So we would move the player's token three spots up the volatility track for the corresponding number of tiles in their vehicle with the, uh, with the volatility symbol on it. However, if that vehicle had one of these generic improvements with the golden wrench on it, we would automatically reduce one point of volatility on the track when placing that tile. Another action that a player can take during the resolve phase in this first section here is they can discard one tile from their blueprint. If the player chose to do that, they would remove the tile from their hand and discard it from the game. It would go back in the box, it would no longer be seen. Now we'll come back to the back alley in a few minutes. I first want to explain what the patent office and the junkyard do. If a player places their worker here in the patent office, they have a choice of drawing one new part tile either blindly from the draw stack here or one of these six face-up new part tiles. But they cannot exceed their hand limit of five. Okay, so the yellow player here is first. She's going to take this steam motor. She would then take her worker and place it in the holding box. Then the green player would go and let's say he takes this gear box and he put it in his blueprint. Then he would place his worker in the holding box as well. And then finally the yellow player would go again and say she took this steam fuel tank. Once a tile is drawn from the face-up tiles above the patent office, you do not replace them. 
they are left empty until the resolve phase, which we'll get into in a minute. If a player placed their worker in the junkyard here, they could choose to blindly draw one or two tiles from the junkyard draw stack here, or they could choose to draw one or two of these face-up junk part tiles as long as they don't exceed their hand limit of five. If they choose to draw from the face-up junk part tiles here, they would take the tile, place it in their blueprint, and then automatically refill the tile that they had taken. Okay, so yellow player here's the first one in the junkyard. And she'll draw the top card blindly and place it in her hand. Okay, then the green player here will go placing his worker in the holding box and he will take this axle, place it in his hand, and then refill the, to the tile that he took with a new tile. Okay, so if we go to the workshop here, we can see numbers above each space in the workshop area. That tells you how many action points you get for being in the spot you are in, in the workshop. So the yellow player here would get three action points in the first spot on the track in the workshop. The green player would get two action points for being in this spot and one action point for being in this spot for a total of three. Now the first thing you want to notice is the order of where the players are in the workshop track. The player who is furthest to the right, in this case the green player, will become the first player to go in the next round. You would simply hand the first player marker from the one player to the next. As you can see, there are three symbols in the workshop area here. The first symbol means we can build. That means we can place tiles from our blueprint into our vehicle for one action point depicted by the space in the track that we are in. Okay, so for example, to build, the yellow player here has an electric motor, a steam engine, a steam tank, and a axle in her blueprint or hand. Okay, so she would choose, so to build, she chooses to place this steam motor, steam engine in her hand into her vehicle. So she would simply place the steam engine in her vehicle. And she could do that, she could do one tile for every action point she gets according to her location in the workshop track. The second symbol here means we can dismantle. That means we can remove one tile from our vehicle and discard it from the game for one action point. For a free action, players can join their two halves of their vehicle together to form one vehicle. As a dismantle action, a player can remove one tile for one action point from their vehicle and discard it from the game. If the vehicle were joined, it would then be considered separated again. The last symbol here, or set of symbols I should say, is the upgrade action. So for one action point, we can upgrade any amount of tiles in our vehicle with tiles in our hand that match the same color and type of tile that we are trying to upgrade. Now for an upgrade action, the player can play one action point and then they can upgrade any amount of tiles in their vehicle as long as they have a replacement tile in their hand of the same type and color. Okay, so the yellow player here upgraded this junk part electric motor, this junk part steam tank, and this junk part axle with new parts of the same type and color. Okay, so now that I explain how the rest of the action spaces on the board works, we're going to go back to the second location, the back out location here, 
and I'll explain how that works. Okay, so this first symbol here is the black market symbol. What that means is a player can choose to take the top three tiles from the new part tiles here in the patent office and then they could take one tile and place it in their blueprint. Then they could take the remaining two tiles and either place them at the top of the new part stack or on the bottom of the new part stack as long as they keep those two tiles together. The next action here is called espionage. When a player performs the espionage action they can look at another player's blueprint and then take one of their tiles and place it in their own blueprint. The final action here is Union Muscle. And what that means is a player can take their worker in a location and swap it with another player's worker in that same location. And this could be done in any of these three locations here. Okay. Now it doesn't necessarily mean they have to swap one spot below or above them okay for example say we had the green player down here and he wanted the second slot in the patent office he could jump up two spots and move the yellow players first worker down to the bottom track now once any action in the back alley is resolved they would move their worker from the spot in the back alley into this temporary holding box here until the end of the resolve phase on the next turn at which point they would move their worker down into the regular holding box so in essence if you take a back alley action you're losing a worker for an entire turn the final phase of the game is the refresh phase during the refresh phase, players will take all remaining face-up tiles from the patent office here. They will discard them from the game, and then they will replace them with six new tiles from the new part stack and place them face-up. Okay. They will also take the three face-up junk part tiles and discard them from the game, and then replace them with three new face-up junk part tiles. Players will continue to do the three phases of the game over several rounds until either one of the two part tiles has been reduced to the point where they cannot refill any of the face-up tiles that correspond with that part tile or a player has placed 12 tiles in their vehicle which completes their vehicle that consists of at least one propulsion unit consisting of a motor and a fuel system of the same color a steering assembly a gear unit and two axles at this point if a player has either empty spots in their vehicle or components that do not function due to their missing another component, they would fill or cover these spots with scrap parts, starting with the first player and then moving on to each player thereafter. Okay, to do this, players will draw the top tile from the spare part pile and place their spare parts in either vacant sections of their vehicle or to replace parts that do not function due to them missing necessary parts of the same color. Now these spare parts can work either as a top piece or as a bottom piece. Okay so first thing we're going to do is fill in all of the vacant spots that this vehicle needs. Okay. The vehicle was missing a steering system, so we put a spare part there. It was also missing one axle, so we put a spare part there. Now, we have this steam motor here, but we do not have the steam tank that it needs to run. In this case, 
we would then cover up the steam motor due to it not having the corresponding part it needs to work. However, a player may also choose to cover up an unnecessary component of the vehicle to take place of the missing steam tank if they choose to so that they can score points due to the investors feature on the tile. This is up to the player's discretion. However, this player chooses to cover up the steam engine so they can receive these wrenches which they will need to reduce the number of volatility in their vehicle. At this point, a player may join their two parts of their prototype together to form the completed vehicle. Okay, so if we look at the score track here, it gives us an indication of what we have to do in order to score our victory points. The first symbol here refers to our investors. So, if we look at this investor here, for the first two symbols of comfort, we would gain two victory points. And then for each additional symbol for comfort, we would gain an additional two victory points. As you can see, this vehicle only has one feather on it, one comfort symbol, so the player would score zero points. So, the next symbol here is range. For the first two symbols of range, we will receive two victory points, and then for each additional, another two victory points. So as we can see, this, invest this prototype has no range symbols on it. We would score no victory points for the vehicle. And finally, this investor is looking for power. So for the first two symbols of power in the vehicle, we'd score two victory points, and then each additional, we score another two victory points. So, as you can see, this vehicle here has one, two symbols of power in it. We'd score two victory points. We would award that, that player two victory points. And then we would resolve the next investor. Next we will go to the largest continuous group of a colored section of tiles in the game and we will give them one victory point for each tile in that largest group of tiles. So now we go into the largest continuously touching group of a specific color. Okay so in this vehicle's case it would be these three green pieces here. Okay so you score the continuous group by orthogonal not diagonal okay now if we switch this up a little bit and we put this improvement tile in between these two green components here she would still be able to score three points because if you have a generic t uh, tile in between any of your colored tiles it would count as a continuous group okay However, if there was a spare part in between two colored components, that would break up your continuous group. And if we went a little bit further with our generic parts, we could count them as our largest group in the case of this vehicle here okay because green gray is considered one of the color groups so in this vehicle we have one two three four five six gray pieces and one two three green tiles the gray would be the majority the largest continuous uh, tiles that touch each other she would score six points any generic part is considered to be gray so we would give that player six points, which would bring her from two to eight. Now the final scoring condition here is for every point, for every symbol of volatility in the vehicle, we would subtract one victory point. So if we look at this vehicle, there's one, two symbols of volatility. This black cloud of smoke there. So we would subtract two 
point because it's minus one victory point for every symbol of volatility in the vehicle. However, for every generic improvement tile you have, it has a golden wrench, which will negate one tile, one symbol of volatility. So, in this vehicle, there's two tiles with a volatility symbol, but there are also two generic improvement tiles with the golden wrench on it, so there would be zero victory points lost. So, in essence, this player did not lose any victory points. So, after calculating the victory points, if there was a tie, the player with the least amount of volatility in their vehicle would win the game. If there is still a tie, the players would share the win equally. And that's how you play Gear and Piston.